Hello, hello, it's me here. Um, today, we're going to be making a tier list of all the things I read in 2022 and ranking them from my favorites to my least favorites to all that good stuff. But um, before we get onto the tier list at hand, I would firstly like to apologize for not uploading like, any videos or anything for the past few months. I've got to be honest, I kind of burnt myself out on the... Um, my rent tour video it was it was a lot of fun and i'm really happy with how it turned out but i basically just tried to i was basically just rushing to finish it before um before i left to travel and it, it was fun because you know it's fun like editing and stuff but it's such a long process that it did definitely kind of left me feeling like super burnt out and i just have not wanted to like work on a more like properly edited and stuff video so it's it's kind of just that's just kind of why it hasn't, another one hasn't come out yet. But I've just been playing stuff and it's been a lot of fun and we're gonna talk about it now. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get started. So, here I have the games that I played um, in order from like, the first one I beat to the last one I beat. And I also have some stuff that I'm currently playing or in the middle of. And then also some stuff that I'm most interested in that will m most likely be done like in 2023. Obviously, there's definitely other VNs, too, that, like, I'm gonna read throughout next year that aren't even on this list. But I figured I might as well, it'd be kind of cool to just put the ones I'm most interested in and talk about them a little. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get started. So the first game, or the first VN I beat this year is Needy Girl Overdose, or Needy Streamer Overload in English. And, um, I heard, I didn't really hear anything about this game or, like, see anything about this game before. Uh, at the time it came out, I believe it came out probably sometime in like January, or like February, definitely early in the year. And um, I didn't even see like any promotion stuff for it. I kind of just found out about it due to some like mutuals on Twitter posting about it. And uh, at first, I didn't really have any like uh, big impressions on it. But I decided I heard it was kind of short, or at least like 10, 15 hours before I get all the endings, which is true. And I figured, well, it'd be kind of cool to start this. Uh, why not, right? And <laughs> I ended up really, really loving this game. Um, the concept is just uh, Ame Chan, the, I guess, main character in the game, main heroine, whatever. Uh, you manage like her stream schedule and like her day to day life, and it's just a bunch of, it involves a bunch of like messaging her, and she messages you, and like involves her streaming, and obviously you get to like <laughs> look at, you get to moderate her Twitch chat. Kind of awesome. Um, but. I, uh, I do like to stream also, so, like, I stream relatively often, and so, kind of seeing how this game tackles, like, the different, um, like, stream chat, like, stream culture, I guess I should say, like, that, and then also, like, the replies on her Twitter, especially as she gets, like, more popular, and, like, all of that, it honestly, like, it really, honestly gets super close to home. Ami-chan's character, as well, is also just something that, like, is <laughs> for better or for worse, she's probably the most relatable character I've ever experienced in fiction. And honestly, like when it comes to picking my top favorite thing, sometimes I'm like super indecisive. So like, I don't like to give like a complete blanket statement. But like, she, she's dangerously close to just being my favorite character of all time right now. Just everything about her is something that it's <laughs> way too close to home. And all the different like mechanics in the game. Uh, when it comes to like managing like her stress levels and like how different ideas and like different like streams affect her stress in different levels and just all of that, it's something that like like they're game mechanics, but they just feel like so real to me. To so, like it really stuck with me. Everything about this game stuck with me, and I absolutely adore it. <laughs> I would go as far as say it's my second favorite thing. Like. Not just VN, but like a media as a whole that I played this year, and I just love it a lot. Um, some criticisms, criticisms but is probably just that sometimes that like the process of getting all the endings can be a little too a little too repetitive, and that's fair enough. That's definitely fair. Um, I can understand if you just get a couple endings and then just watch the rest or whatever. But for me personally, I <laughs> I really enjoyed the process of getting all the endings because while the I guess the base gameplay can be a little repetitive to get all of them, personally the like different 
um, like re-watching slash just getting to experience all the different like chat messages like because there's a there's a lot of fucking text in this game just that is that you're not guaranteed to see all of it and then like Ami-chan's messages and like her tweets and like all of that like it honestly made the experience not really repetitive for me so I just loved going through it it was it was a lot of fun and it's just I really fucking love this game so yeah very very big fan <laughs> So then the next visual novel I started was Base Summer Pockets, and uh, let's see, this is, I've, I've read a good amount of key visual novels last year, this is one of the last ones I tackled, I guess, and I'm still not completely done with their library, as you can see, <laughs> some of these I, I'd go over, and then also uh, Reflection Blue, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, but I figured, well, I've read through most of their other, like, kind of big, meaty, long visual novels, and I was pretty curious to try out Summer Pockets, because the art style looked pretty, and uh, it'd probably make you cry, which it did, so, <laughs> yeah, I, it was, so, my thoughts on it, um, I like it, I like it uh, a pretty good amount, how I feel about it as a whole is, I don't say mixed, because I can imply I have some bad feelings towards it, which I don't, um, it's just mainly that, like, the true routes, like, I think it's just called Alka and Pocket, those two routes I really, really adore. They're both, um, I would consider them amazing. Like, they're just really great, and they build up super well for each other. It's super good. And then Shiro, Shiro Hut, oh. <laughs> uh, the white hair main girl, I'll probably put a picture of her somewhere since I'm talking about it. Um, she, I like her route in the context of the true routes because her route kind of, like, it leads to those two routes essentially. Because she's the main heroine of the game. Spoilers, I guess. <laughs> but, uh... I liked her route kind of after the... Well, I still liked it on the first read, but then kind of with the extra context of the, like, true routes and stuff, it made her route a lot more impactful to think about. And I think on reread, I'll probably like it even more. But, um... The other three heroine routes in the game, they're, they're definitely not bad. But for me personally, they just didn't really, like, stick with me a lot. I'm not really sure, just like, definitely not bad. I want to emphasize that they were good. It was fun reading them all. I had a great time going through them, but they weren't just sort of like the, like, I don't know, they didn't, I didn't think about them much after finishing them, besides, yeah, the girls are pretty cute. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't really have, like, too much to particularly say. Uh, oh, and I guess the Conrad stuff, the Conrad stuff is, uh, it's not bad, it's pretty funny, like pretty cute, you know, standard, standard kind of thing. Um, however, what I would like to say is that I'm obviously talking about base summer pockets here, I'm not talking about reflection blue, and from what I gather, uh, oh wait, yeah, other things about summer pockets is that I didn't particularly care for a good majority of the cast, or like, I like them, like I definitely would say, yeah, they're, they're cool, but I wouldn't, like, I don't have anything like that's particularly special to say about them, but... I think a lot of my kind of complaints about that and like some of these side characters, mainly like nothing's wrong with Nomiki, she just didn't super stand out for me personally, and then like Shizuku, I think her name is. Uh, I, I didn't really like her at all, honestly. Um, I think my main problems with like those characters and like the kind of other side characters, I think those will be addressed in Reflection Blue. and. Um, in Reflection Blue, Nomiki and Shizuku both get like character routes, so they obviously have that spotlight on them. And I, I'm sure not. Obviously, the other like male side characters don't have a route, but I'm sure that they will play a role at least in like Nomiki's route to be a, a bit more relevant there. And then um, Umi, who is probably my favorite character of the game, I'm not too sure. I'll say her and Shiroha, Shiroha bleh, are both very good. I love them both a lot. Um, What's it called? She also, she also has a route in Reflection Blue, and uh, I'm super excited to that because I heard it's also super good. And then Shiki, she's not in base from her pockets from what I remember, but she also looks extremely cute. So if her route is also good, which I heard it is, I think that would also like kind of add to like more positive feelings about the game as a whole. And just um, I think I also heard it changes some stuff in the true routes to make the ending a bit more satisfying or maybe more emotional 
Uh, I'm not too entirely sure. I've actually gotten spoiler free on like all the summer, uh, bleh, all the reflection blue content. So yeah, kind of interesting. <laughs> but uh, overall, I think that if reflection blue kind of does handle my like main complaints about the game or like just issues I had with the original with it, mainly being that I didn't super care about most of the characters besides Shiroha and Umi and. The other characters are still fine, but they just didn't leave like a big impact on me. If Reflection Blue changes that and like basically just makes me like everyone way more, and then um, I don't know, stuff with the ending is like better and just more character moments that are good, etc. etc. Like if this game fixes all my problems that I had with Summer Pockets that a game I already like and makes it even better, then honestly I could see it like I could see Reflection Blue probably being like like somewhere up here. Because it's still, it's still definitely solid. For now, though, I will put base star pockets probably... I can't decide if I would put it at the top of B or, like, maybe bottom of A. I'll put it at A for now, and we'll see what other games, where they go, and uh, adjust it accordingly. So, yeah. On to Harmonia, which is another key visual novel. Um, if you ever read Planetarian, it's a kind of, like, kind of similar to that. It's a pretty short game, probably you can finish it under like 5 hours at most, most likely. And it's got kind of the same, like pretty dark atmosphere, I forget exactly, <laughs> sounds pretty bad. I don't remember exactly like, I think it just takes place with a bunch of like different robots, like all the characters are like, robot, and the main character is, he's got, I think he, I don't remember, <laughs> I'm sorry, this is not professional at all. Um, but the point is, it's a short VN that you can finish in like a day. It's very cheap on Steam. It's like, I think it was like two or three bucks on sale. So if you want to try it out, you, I mean, you can. It has some highlights to it. Some of the, like, some, there's still some like sad moments, which key VNs are mainly known for, for sure. But, uh, as a whole, this game is just kind of, like, I don't want to say it's bad, because that would... Obviously, I, I dislike it, but it's just kind of like whatever. Like you know, it has a nice ending. You know, it's it's cute. It's got some so sad moments. The art, like style, and like um, what's the word? Like it just it looks nice. It has some like cool backgrounds. It definitely feels like it's it's a good experience for like what it is. But as a whole, it <laughs> I definitely just kind of have forgotten most things about it, and it's usually not a good sign. Um, and I just don't have any strong feelings towards it as a whole. So I'm gonna just put it here and see. As I said, I don't dislike it or anything. It's fine. And considering how cheap it is, like it's it's good. Like or it's good for like that price. Like three bucks? Sure, why not? <laughs> um, but seven not anything that left a lasting impact on me. So yeah. <laughs> um next on the list is uh, Aokana, or I think the full name is like Oh no, Kanata Rhythm, Rhythm something. But we just call it Aokana, because that's easier. Um, this is a VN I kind of went in with not a whole lot of expectations, and I came out having a really good time, honestly. Compared to, I guess, like most slash all other things here, this is actually a VN that kind of has a more focus on a unique sport. It's just called Flying Circus, and I don't remember all the rules offhand. Shame on me. But, um, it's just basically involving, like, I, I guess kind of not, not like flying tag, but it's just a spore about, like, you fly and, um, you either get a bunch of points by going from a, like, what's the word, like a pillar to pillar, essentially, I guess, or you, um, or you have to, like, fight your opponent and, like, hit their back, and you can, like, combo that, and then, there's like rules involving that you can't just go, I think, point to point to point to point. Like at some point you have to interact with your opponent. Um, it's also pretty fun, obviously because of that sport. There are good chunks of the VN that focus on like describing and having visuals for the fights. Or I guess you, I guess you could say fights, matches, that's where I should use actually, yeah. And honestly, sometimes like it can drag on a little bit. Like a little bit too much because sometimes they will like constantly go over like a phrase and then be like, a character will be like, what? Well, what do you mean by that? And then the like main character will explain in like a, <laughs> quite a few lines about like whatever it is he's like happened. And it can get like that can happen a little too much, it can be a little cheesy sometimes, but 
there's definitely a good amount of matches that are really fun to watch and like really just genuinely like entertaining and like obviously sometimes the prediction or shit sometimes the like ending result might be kind of obvious or like you, you can probably figure out what's gonna happen but I think it's as a whole it's still really fun like I liked it I honestly really liked it um I like reading that the character routes or I should also say that the common route is pretty good fun Sometimes there's some comedic moments that are a little, like, <laughs> a little cringy, like, eh, it's not really that funny, but whatever. But, you know, it's still pretty fun, it's not too, too long, and it's very pretty. I should also mention that for sure, that this fan is very pretty, it has a lot of really nice art. And, um, yeah, I, I enjoyed the Kana route quite a bit. Then as for the character routes, um, Mashiro and Rika's routes, they're, they're alright. Um, I don't particularly feel too much about them as a whole. They, I mean, they're not bad or anything, they're definitely not bad. Because uh, they, they still have like, pretty cute moments and like good character moments. But they're not, like, they weren't super impactful to me personally. And it's a little bit how I feel about Asuka's route, except her route was a lot more fun as a whole. Like, just super like enjoyable to read because she's, she's a goofy little character. And she's also cute. So, you know, I liked it. I liked it a good amount. Like, if I had to rate the routes, like, you know, we'd have Mashiro and Rika's probably like a 6, and then yeah, Asuka's route at a 7. However, my personal favorite route, and honestly, just one of my favorite character routes, like, literally ever, so I guess favorite, like, route slash content, is Misaki's route. And I really, really love Misaki's route, and I really like Misaki herself, if you can't already tell. Um, uh, without going, I guess, like, deep into spoilers or anything, Mainly what her route focuses on is, like, the whole, I guess, BN covers a theme of, like, I guess not, I don't know about the whole BN, but, like, her theme, her route mainly covers about like, natural talent versus someone who starts off really bad at the sport and then gets better, like, extremely fast, and then also soon, out, soon outclasses the person with natural talent because that person doesn't feel like the need to keep trying or like keep improving and thus gets like falls behind and that gives a sort of jealousy feeling. That sort of like kind of topic is mainly covered in her route I would say. And I think it's honestly a thing that I really enjoyed reading. I really enjoyed seeing how they tackled it and tackled Misaki's mindset as well as the main character's mindset throughout the whole thing. Um, it was really interesting. Misaki as a character I think is just like everything about her is just really good to me. I really just love everything about that fucking She's so good. <laughs> um, I just, the other character routes are definitely like fine in their own right and good, but Misaki's character and just her route in general and how it tackles that same topic and how she like handles and tries to grow throughout the whole thing. I think it is really, really fucking good. It's so good. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so as a whole, I would probably put it, like, it's a little hard for me to rate it because, like, Misaki's star is, like, up here, <laughs> but the rest of the band is probably, like, here-ish, here, not, not, I can have that low. Is that what it, yeah, like, like, here or so, but as a whole, I guess I'll just kind of balance it and put it here. As a whole, I would definitely recommend Alcana to anyone, honestly. The game as a whole, as I said, very pretty. You don't, I mean, they're definitely out there, I just haven't personally read them, but it's cool to just have a actual kind of sports competitive theme in a VN that, you know, it's fun to read and it's enjoyable, and yeah. And do it for Misaki, because she's the GOAT. I really like her. <laughs> uh, yeah. So next, next we have Moon, and for those unaware, this is basically by key before they became key as the team tactics basically just had like all of the i guess main like authors and like staff before they i think branched off to become key i forget the exact like lore behind it all i didn't like i haven't super brushed up on it but it's, i guess the gist so you know if you look at a lot of key vms the main i guess kind of theme is super sad at points and then Usually it takes place in like a like a high school setting, and then maybe it'll diverge a bit and get rewrite because obviously that's not it, the beginning isn't like high school stuff, but it branches out into more supernatural stuff. But for the most part, they have their sad moments, and then they have their like kind of romance theme to it. And uh, yeah, it basically it's they kind of have a theme going on. And I'm not gonna say that's a bad thing. It's just something you might notice if you're going through the library. 
I guess air is actually pretty different too, but besides the point. <laughs> um, Moon is completely different from that. It's it's a, a visual novel I read in 2022. That's all I can really say about it. <laughs> um, it's probably honestly like the most <laughs> mixed Kivian that exists. If I had to, if I had to guess, because it has some cool concepts, right? It has a female protagonist, which, as far as I know, no other keyword has. I might be wrong. I could definitely be wrong, but. Most of them usually have the male protagonist and uh, he helps anime girls. <laughs> Something like that. Um, but this one actually has a female protagonist and she has to deal with her own problems essentially throughout the course of the VN. And the VN hint tries to tackle a lot of um, darker topics. There's a lot of, um, to, without saying the actual word because I don't want to get banned or something, non consensual acts done towards girls in this VN. And, um, it also makes discussing this being a little difficult because I don't want to be obviously insensitive about what it covers and like what it talks about and tries to do, but it's also kind of just, it's just kind of weird, right? Like, it has like a unique concept of the main character has to, like obviously there's these acts going on because she enters like a, um, like an organization building to try and I think avenge her mother who died by like, She's trying to figure out how she died, I think. And I think the last place she had went was to that organization. And so she actually has, like, the idea of, like, kind of revenge in mind. But it, what it tries to, like, cover with the main character herself is that she has to go to this room and basically live out scenes from her past and you're, like, try to just, like, survive and, like, develop from them. And a lot of the acts, like, if you look at them all, like, blanketly, I'm not gonna go into any specifics, but a lot of it just comes from her doing stupid stuff because she was lonely and didn't have any friends. But what the actual actions and things that you're watching feel kind of, like, weird? Like, <laughs> I don't have a problem with, I guess, problematic, quote-unquote, content in of itself. I mean, as you can tell, but probably placements of <laughs> later VNs and also just stuff I like in general. I think that like, that doesn't bother me inherently, but the way it's just kind of executed in Moon feels super weird. I, I don't really know how to feel about it as a whole. Because, like, the concepts themselves, not bad, not bad at all. But how it's actually done is, like, <laughs> kind of weird. I don't know. It's... It is relatively short. I think I finished it in like 10 hours or less. Would I recommend it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> like, if you just look up the tags on VNDB, you could see a lot of what what kind of shit goes on in it. It's also got a weird dungeon crawling system, which is, <laughs> it's goofy. It makes you think you can kind of explore and like do stuff maybe out of order or find new stuff, but outside of like one segment, it doesn't really matter. Um, I guess like, <clears throat> I guess like, I don't know, the, some concepts are still cool, but I think the execution is just kind of a miss, but that being said, I did, I did, I, it, it's hard to say if I like this VN or not, it's really difficult, but I, I think what it has is more interesting to me than harmonious, so we're gonna put it in front, that might make some people upset, I'm sorry, but whatever. <laughs> Alright, fun to be an actually like. Next we have Seabed, and Seabed is, it's a really, really unique and really cool VN. Um, basically the, I guess, kind of, oh, I should also say, it's Yuri. It's, I think, probably the first, like, actual Yuri VN I've, like, read. And, uh, I'm gonna take a sip of water. <laughs> this is unprofessional. <sighs> the first, kind of, Yuri VN I think I read, and probably just one of my first, like, Yuri works in general. Um, and the kind of the main topic of it all is grief and how to, or how the main character Sachiko handles the loss of her, uh, I think, I forget if they were married or if they were fiancés, but someone she cares about a whole lot and just like what goes on in her head throughout the whole being. And it's honestly, it. It didn't make me cry inherently. I don't think I cried throughout any of it, but it definitely like it hits like a truck at points because like 
she just goes through so much pain throughout the whole thing and like I guess coping mechanisms like what she does to try and like cope and just survive through it all and like just the way it goes into her life and like the lives of like the life she had when she, her her like fiance slash wife was around and just seeing how she changes and what she does to try and handle it all. It's really fucking good. The whole story is just about grief and like I already kinda said that but yeah. <laughs> It's it's really good. Tachiko's protagonist is <laughs> she's the perfect woman, but <laughs> on a more serious note, she's just really fun to read. Or not, I guess not fun, just like really good and a really pleasant character. And definitely one thing that kind of stands out about the Venus as a whole is it has a really good atmosphere, like kind of this vibe to it, right? Um, you know, some other Venus, I guess actually not. Not the most fans on this list in particular, but if you may think of just random fans in general, you may think, oh, it's the typical high school setting, blah, 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 though it's all the same, blah, blah, blah. But CBED actually, like, it has different moments, and I think there's some moments where obviously they're, like, in school, like, during flashbacks, but a good majority of the game, I would say, is, like, focusing on Tachiko in her adult life, because obviously, I, mean, she, I already said that she was married or, like, had a fiance and all that type of stuff, so. Obviously, it takes place like, you know, you see when she goes to work and like, just her thoughts during that, all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's really good. I, it's something that like, I would honestly just recommend to a lot of people, because, <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. It's really good. I love it a lot. Um, so she goes one of my favorite characters ever. But honestly, the whole cast in general is just really good. And it's a really pleasant thing to read, and I would definitely uh, recommend it. So I'll put it probably here, cause um, it doesn't reach the exact same level of like the <laughs> brain rot that I got from things that would go up here in S plus tier, but it's still something I love a lot and would definitely like. I still think about it quite a bit. And yeah. So next on the list we have Chaos Child, and Chaos Child is a pretty neat VN. It's uh, I, I guess a murder mystery? Like, it books on like a series of murders, um, and it books on that, and then all the different character routes, and like, uh, just an over-ending, that's not the word, I don't think it's a word, <laughs> um, just an, what the fuck is the word I'm thinking of? Underlying mystery? I think it's what I'm thinking of, yeah? Um, that you try to like figure out as you go for each of the character routes, and like the Common route. I say common route, but basically, your first play through the game, you're stuck going through one game with. There's choices, as in uh, Takuru's delusions, which a positive delusion kind of nets a um, like a really positive or like trippy version of whatever is occurring in his head, or it can be a negative delusion, which will be often very gory or like horror esque and like <laughs> usually involve someone getting murdered in his head. Like, he's a fucked up dude, but I think that concept alone is very cool, honestly, because, well, yeah, and, but yeah, you basically, those choices exist, but for your first playthrough, they don't affect anything beyond, like, just what you're reading. For your second playthrough, I guess, you is when you'll be able to start branching into the actual common route, or the actual character routes, so the choices you make for delusions do matter. Sometimes they're a little cryptic, sometimes you'll be like, why do I have to make this a positive delusion to get this character out that makes no sense. Definitely true. <laughs> it's a little weird, but as a whole, it's honestly a really cool mechanic and a really cool twist on just making, instead of choosing, yes, I want to be with this girl, or no, don't talk to me to like get a specific character out. It's that like you kind of view these different moments and different scenes that play out in his head, and it's really, it's just really neat. Like obviously the end result is the same, you get the character out, but it's, it's more unique, and that's that's definitely a plus. Um, the different murders are <laughs> they get pretty kind of kind of scary, kind of messed up, and it definitely makes it stand out too in my head. Um, the different characters, besides one very specific character, that I think if I say I dislike them, <laughs> everyone who's read it will definitely know. Um, but one character I was kind of ass, kind of shit. I mean, it's I guess it's not the worst, but it's. I'd say it's bad. Fuck it. <laughs> but the rest of the character arts are honestly, uh, I guess my other one's not the best, but two of the character arts in particular, I really, really, really enjoyed. And, um, 
Uh, the true route is also something I very much enjoyed, and the whole kind of common route ending you get, super good. The as I said, the murders are pretty scary. The overall atmosphere and tone of the game is pretty spooky. I, not like I don't think I don't know if you would consider it horror, but like it's definitely like it keeps you on edge at times. And the whole OST and like the art style, like there's definitely some like CGs that might look a little weird, or, like character portraits, but. As a whole, I think it all just goes together super well, and um, I really enjoyed it um, as a whole. And Tucker is definitely like, I guess he can be a hit or miss protagonist, and I'll say fair enough. You know, I won't judge if anyone dislikes him, I guess. But I personally thought that he was like, he's perfect for this kind of story, and he's also not, like, for me, he wasn't like insufferable. Like, yeah, sometimes he's like, sometimes he's stupid, and he, like he's a dick, but like he's also like. <laughs> the most like awkward kid and like as it goes into like his backstory and like just like why he is the way he is I think it's like I think it's just all really interesting like I think he's a pretty good character and I think the other girls besides one are all pretty great characters as well and yeah so as a whole I definitely like it quite a bit um oops I'm not sure if I'll put it at the bottom or Sorry, the top of B or the bottom of A. Kind of thinking about it now, I might keep it at the bottom of A for now. Or, but, I don't know. I know I would move it. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. That's all that matters, right? Next we have Son of a Witch, or Sabat of the Witch in English. I kind of like just how Son of a Witch sounds more, though. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is just, my, this is actually my first Usersoft VN. And if you don't know what Usersoft VNs are kind of, I guess, known for, it's mainly just... I don't know if they're all focused on like a high school setting, probably, <laughs> but it's just a bunch of cute girls, you get to talk to cute girls, you get to get all their endings, it's very cute, and there's probably like an ending or two that gets pretty sad, like a true girl or something. That's at least how this one was, and um, I really enjoyed it, I honestly enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to. Um, the character routes, the comic route and the character routes were all good fun, the, I guess, true heroine of the game. Is, oh wait, actually, let me go into a little bit more first. There's just a, there's like a certain metro element that is in all the different character ads, besides maybe one, I don't particularly remember, but they're all cute, the romance is all cute, it's just super fluffy, like, it's not some serious, like, you're gonna fucking die plot, but like, it's just fun to read, and since, actually, I think this was, obviously, you see the top of the order, this is what I read after Chaos Child, and I said, I really want something comfy, so I read it, and I definitely am happy I did. Um, but the churro, honestly, like, I didn't expect much going into it, but it honestly made me cry. Like, I was, it was, some parts of it were, like, hit kind of close to home, honestly, for, like, the heroine's thoughts about it and everything. And, yeah, like, it, it was honestly just surprisingly, like, a really enjoyable experience for me. Um, <clears> hold <throat> on, oh, I gotta take more water. Alright, there we go. So yeah, it's it's definitely a experience I enjoyed a lot. And uh, yeah, honestly, I would honestly just recommend it to people too. Like if you, <laughs> as long as you like don't expect something that's like gonna break your brain or something, I think it's super fun and like I enjoyed it a lot. Honestly, I would put it here for sure. Honestly, I like it. <laughs> I like it more than like summer pockets as a whole. Um, I really like it. If you can't already tell. Uh, so yeah. Next we have Subahibi, or Wonderful Everyday Life. I don't remember the whole name. I'm sorry. I'm a fake fan. <laughs> but I really love, like, I, I mean, I really, really love this VN. It obviously, anyone who's aware of it probably knows that there's a lot of fucked up things in it. And <laughs> it might make you squeamish at times. And that's, it's definitely, it definitely did. And... <clears throat> But there's just so much I really, really love about this VN. First of all, um, I guess I should, about the, I should talk about the art. At first I kind of was like, eh, I don't know how I feel about the art. Like, didn't think it was bad or anything, I just didn't know if I like, felt. But honestly, it grew on me a lot throughout the whole thing. There's some really, really nice CGs, and a lot of them just kind of paint the like, atmosphere for the game just right. It's all, it's all really good. Um, and then for the cast itself, I, it's honestly one of my favorite casts in just any piece of media as a whole. 
My favorite character is Kimika. I tweeted slash posted about her a lot. She's I love her to death. But even besides her, so many other characters mean so much to me, and I think about so many of them just all the time. Like <laughs> it, every character, at least like all like the kind of I guess main characters are really great. Some I guess like the main like villain bully characters are obviously like like you're not gonna like them at all. But like for all the main characters, like. They're all great and they're all amazing. And I love them all. <laughs> and then, um, what else is there? What's also pretty cool about this VN is, first of all, it's a, I guess, in the Dempa category, which, um, I don't know how to describe it without sounding dumb, <laughs> but it's just like lots of trippy stuff and like it's just like kind of weird shit happening all the time and that kind of thing. And like sometimes you're like, what the fuck is going on? And you're not gonna really, really understand yet. But what's really cool about Tsubahibi in particular, at least for me, is that it has a bunch of different protagonists and different like characters and like you see the perspective of stuff of. So like let's say the first protagonist, you see all of like how she thinks about things and how she views everything that's going on. And then the next chapter, um, you go into a new protagonist and you get to see her thoughts and her perspective on everything and like what she views and then their views might often kind of conflict from one another because obviously their thoughts and their monologues are going to be like affected by their biases and like what they're thinking right so that whole concept is really cool and it's like super interesting to like hurt the whole game i'm just thinking about hmm, well what do you think actually happened like what what went wrong what the, what went on what went on here like i think that was really cool it was just super fun to think about especially because there's also just a bunch of trippy things going on so like it's just really good yeah <laughs> i really really enjoyed that aspect of it the overall atmosphere of the top fuck, <laughs> the whole atmosphere of the game is something i also really enjoyed it's got like there's one thing that this game gave me a lot of is the feeling of dread and and i kind of <laughs> i really liked it because it kind of feels like some means like you don't really feel anything when you read them or just maybe you feel happy but like this one I knew as like as like a story that like my scene is going on that's like something really bad is gonna happen to these characters like or this character and like that feeling of like just dread and like anxiety for like oh no what's gonna happen like it was just constant throughout the whole game and I really <laughs> this sounds weird but I really like that feeling I like that it evokes such an emotion out of me and just <laughs> it always it always turned out for the worst but man, like, it was just, it was so good. <laughs> it's just, I really enjoyed just the whole like, atmosphere that the game had. And <laughs> yeah. It's not something I would just recommend to everybody because obviously, like, the content stuff can get kind of, can get kind of bad. And, um, but for what it is, the overall message of the game at the end and just, like, the whole feelings I had during the whole thing, I, like, I just really, really loved this VN. And I still think about it a ton every day. Just, I love it. So I'm gonna go up here. You know, got another S plus. You know, woo, awesome. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I guess the last thing I should talk about it, talk about is uh, you know all the different protagonists. Like I swear, every single one of them, which is rank of like, when I've considered doing like more VN protagonist lists and like ranking them all, like I would have every single Super Heavy main character besides maybe one like <laughs> in there. Like I'd love them all. <clears throat> so yeah, on the topic of amazing protagonists, we have Muramasa, and I went to this with no expectations as well, and I really, <laughs> really fucking loved it. A lot of it kind of goes, like, I guess some of the, I guess, main stuff in it is, there's these, like, I forget, oh fuck, I don't know the exact name. There's basically Samurai Mecha, right? And <laughs> there's a lot of different fights and, like, duels between them, like, I think those moments, like, I guess it's fair if someone doesn't like it, but for me, honestly, I really enjoyed reading, like, all of them. <laughs> like, you also kind of can probably figure out what the end result is going to be by the different, like, banter and, like, the dialogue and, like, what each character is thinking in those moments. Like, I think that it was honestly made it just super, like, I, I don't know if any fun is the word, but, like, just super good to read. Like, it was enjoyable. I, I enjoyed it a lot. And also just the different kind of, like, ideals and, like, what each character... <laughs> Thinks about violence. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna try and find this image, which is like, it, can violence like be like rightful or something? Like, it, I don't remember the other words, but like, the main character Kagiaki, who was also the best of all time, no cap. 
he's just he's just great and the different like mindsets of the other I guess like main characters it's super interesting to read all of them um, and how they think about like just everything in general and there's a lot of what like hypocritical act actions in this thing about like violence and killing and like is it ever truly just to do this when like if you take away the life of someone good you might have to take away the life of someone bad like or <laughs> I said that in the opposite way. Sorry. If you take away the life of someone bad, you're gonna have to take away the life of someone good. And like, can that really warrant it? Like, that kind of thing. I kind of messed it up. <laughs> I'm so silly. Whatever. Um, regardless, I think the whole thing is honestly pretty, like, it's interesting enough to me. And I think the way it's executed in the game is super good. Um, all, the whole main characters, like, they're all super great. Obviously, Kakyaki is my favorite. But like, all the different, I can't say side characters, but like, just other main characters are also really great. And just, there's just so much I love in this game. So much stuff. Obviously, there's like the whole serious aspect of it all, like the whole conflict, I guess I just said. But then there's also, there's a, a lot of really funny shit that doesn't feel out of place in the VN. Um, there's a lot of like, just <laughs> really good humor between him and the like two slash three slash maybe more who knows question mark exclamation point um girls in the game and <laughs> kakyagi is just one of the most like I, it's hard for me to like understand just how good of a character he is i just he's so good i don't say he cares divian because i could sound like he is like divian's bad without him but his role and like just he's the perfect character to be the main character you're like <sighs> it's just so hard for me to describe i'm stupid <laughs> I just really, really enjoy him and what, like, his dynamic of all the girls are fucking great. And his whole backstory, just his whole past, and seeing how he deals with, like, <laughs> seeing how he deals with his own actions that were all caused from horrible things and all that kind of shit. It's just, it's super good. It's got a super good, like, tone for too. And the whole thing of it, it just, it just feels like a really unique story because. I mean, there's other mecha VNs. I mean, I guess I have one here too. <laughs> but, um. There's just a whole lot. Or, sorry. I got sidetracked on my train of thought already. Um. It's just, you don't. I don't. I didn't expect for there to be so much samurai mecha shit. Just, like, <laughs> you don't like, see that in a lot of VNs. It feels unique. And it's just really great. Um. I say I really love it a lot. I'm putting it probably here. I go a little back and forth on whether I like Tsubahibi or Muramasa more. It's super close. I love them both very much. <laughs> I don't think too much about it. Um, is there anything else I want to say about it in particular? The music is really good. Adds to the moments. I wish there were a few more songs in the OST. Some songs get like it, it can be like a little repetitive when they play, but they're still like the quality of the songs themselves are all great. The um, character routes are great. Um, the different endings are great. The trending's great. Every single character is good, honestly. Besides like I don't know like. Maybe random one-off characters aren't like the most noteworthy thing, but like for all the main characters and stuff, like they're all super great. Honestly, just one of the best casts in gaming. In gaming, sorry, in Vians as a whole, I love it. It's very special to me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm, I struggle to like properly word why I like some things so much, and we're most of one of those things. I just, I can't properly put into words why I like it so much. So I would just recommend you read it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Next we have the, I guess, other key VN before they became key, which is one. Um, let's go about this game is actually getting a remake. I don't remember if they gave a, like, release date for that VN, or if it's just scheduled to change, or not out yet, etc, etc. Um, but, uh, I read the base version, or the, I guess the OG, as it'll be eventually, and, uh, it's... <laughs> It's definitely a visual novel I read. So I'm extremely mixed on this game as a whole. Two of the character routes, pretty good. One character route, actually no. I would say like two of them are pretty solid. One of them is like good, not the best, but still good. One character route is, <laughs> it's so average that I want to say it's bad, but it's certainly not like inherently bad. It's just like forgettable. And then two of the character outs are some of the <laughs> some of the worst things I've ever had to read in a visual novel. And I, <laughs> it takes a lot to reach that level of shit, but it was so fucking bad. 
And then the car on stuff is just extremely like, whatever, like, yeah, whatever, I read it. <laughs> um, so that's, it's just a super, like, mixed BN for me to, like, talk about and, like, think about. Um, like, I like the art stuff. I have a soft spot for, like, 90s aesthetic art stuff in general. So, like, I think it's, like, cute from that aspect, but uh, those two character arts in particular, they just piss me off just thinking about them and having to experience them was just the worst of all time. <laughs> um, they were, they were bad. Because it's kind of hard for me to rate this VN. It also doesn't help that I really fucking hate the main character. And sometimes it feels like the main character is like, yeah, he's kind of a dick, but like he's like he's not the he's not a horrible person. Just like a, uh, like a dick, like whatever. <laughs> and in other words, he's like the actual fucking scum of the universe, dog shit, like horrible, like. <laughs> Like, I don't want to say a character can be a bad person and also not be, like, a good character. Because, I mean, like, I like rants, right? Like, I'm not going to judge if a character is a bad person. But, like, like I'm not going to judge that. But then, like, the main character is just like, plain fucking unlikable and, like, stupid and, like, insufferable. And it's super weird. Like, I don't know. I just don't know how I feel about this being still. It's been a while since I finished it. Probably finished it maybe sometime middle of the year, maybe? Um, but I still just don't know how I feel about it. Um, one thing I do think is cool about it is that it does actually have a blind protagonist, and her in particular is honestly pretty great. It's not some, like, Omega standout, wow, best of all time quality type of thing, but it's, like, pretty, it's pretty good. Like, honestly, I enjoyed it quite a bit. It's something I probably the highlight of the game, if I have to say. So, uh, let's see. Like, and it's also just cool to see, like, a blind character in media, like, a disabled character. Um, yeah, you don't really see that a lot and like, done well. And, like, the way, you know, the character, the main character, he made some, like... See, it's one of the cases where, in that route in particular, the main character is actually not insufferable. He's actually pretty good. He made some, like, kind of, I guess, like, assumptions about how Misaki, the blind heroine, feels about things. And at some point, she he kind of, like, went through a similar experience that she had to go through which i believe was like walking in a room when it was completely pitch dark and it gave him like a pretty insightful or a pretty good like insight on how she feels and like it made her it made him respect misaki a lot more and like that whole that whole scene is also really great and just seeing how he changes his mindset and it's like gives her so much respect and like which he deserves which is honestly really good it's a pretty good like route and um it's something like i guess the highlight of the game for me but then just all the shitty routes and then like the completely whatever routes and then the car route stuff is just like, eh, it's like fine. I definitely don't think it's a bad BN, but it's definitely one that is just like, this shit routes just really bring it down for me. So like, like I don't know if I put it in B or like C, like I don't know. I'm gonna put it here for now because like, like I don't know. Like maybe depending on what's in like up here and like down here. I mean I'll decide, but. For now, I'm just gonna leave it here, and I will raise it to B at the end. We'll see, whatever, whatever, etc. <sighs> so yeah. <laughs> Next we have Rance One, and this is the OG sub season Rance One. I beat Rance One last year, but before I kind of went on my like Rance journey this year, I decided to play the first game, <laughs> the actual first first game, and it's <laughs> it's goofy. It's like I think I beat it like three hours or something. I beat it in like a night, and um, <laughs> it's. It's kind of goofy. It, I mean, it's obviously very goofy. It has some of the same story stuff, but a lot less of the meat that made me, like, really enjoy the remake, obviously. But for, like, what it is, like, it's goofy. It's still got some funny dialogue. I like the, like, old 80s art or whatever. It's cute. I'm gonna put it, like, probably, like, here. Because it's not just how short it was. Like, obviously, don't expect much for it, but, like, it's, it's fine. I like it. Next, we have Rance 02. Now, I didn't actually could make... I didn't like go to do depth in his game on like my rants video, but um, what's it called? Uh, well, I just blanked. Holy shit. <laughs> um, but honestly, thinking about like the dialogue and like the kind of story stuff in it, it's like it's honestly grown on me a little bit. The gameplay is still bad. Like, I got, or it's still like, that's like a little harsh, but it's also kind of true. Like, it's not very fun. It just feels kind of annoying to like. 
you have to deal with it to get to like the good content, like the story and stuff. But like the character interactions and stuff in it is still really enjoyable. And especially with the Ranso 2 Kai patch, it's it's fucking hilarious. And I really, I definitely really enjoyed like that aspect of it. I just wish I could like the gameplay more. So ranking is gonna be a little, a little weird for me, but just purely for like the comedy and like the content stuff, I'm gonna put it here in B, because it's it's kind of grown on me honestly. Like, I wouldn't mind going for the game again. Like it's funny. <laughs> um, next we have Brands Three, which hey, I made a video on it, so I'm not gonna go like too deep into my thoughts on it, because well, I have the video, but um, I obviously really enjoyed this game. I like it more the more I think about it. I really, really want to play Ranso 3 and just like, cause I know if I really like this game, that like I'm gonna fucking love Ranso 3 for sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm not gonna go too in depth. Just the same old. I really the gameplay is like, it's not like super deep, big brain gameplay, but like it's fun. Like it's it's comfy. It's chill. You get to go for dungeons. You fight with AI. It's like it's cute. I like it. Um, the art style is pretty cute. The, like story and like the whole kind of grand scale it has is really fun and like really cool. The different character moments is great. Seeing how they kind of like start stuff from this game and then like build it on like Grants 4 and onwards is super cool. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I'm gonna definitely put it probably like right here. Big fan, big enjoyer. Same for Grants 4. I'm not gonna go into it too much here because I made the video on it and <laughs> go watch the video if you want my more thoughts on it. But Basically the same thing as like Rant Street, except honestly, this game was growing on me a lot more for, like just thinking about it and ever since I made that video. Um, I obviously liked it, you know, enough to make a whole video on it and like a lot of stuff I really love about it, especially from like different the character interactions that still stick out in my head and like I think about it a ton. It's super great. Um, the gameplay itself is still obviously, I definitely like Rant Street gameplay more than Rant 4, but like what it has in this game, honestly, like it kind of on me just thinking about it and like the different character interactions and just music and like aesthetic and stuff like it all grew on me a lot like i still liked it to begin with but it's like honestly got better whether i'd put this above or under Rance 3 like at least the og i'm not entirely sure like i honestly kind of think that the character interactions in Rance 4 honestly might put it over the edge even though the gameplay is worse than 3 but yeah i'm not i'm not really sure i'm not really sure but I like them. I really like them both. Like, they're gonna be interchangeable here for sure. Um, also, the art is just absolutely gorgeous. I love 90s art and it's like the peak. <laughs> Next, we have Rance 4.1. I don't remember the full name actually. <laughs> I apologize. Um, it's it's definitely a game. <laughs> Honestly, I, the gameplay is super bare bones and like super simple, but like, that's not really a bad thing because obviously, I'm here playing the game for primarily the content in it, like the story, and I'm not, I'm not gonna judge these games having bad gameplay or anything. Obviously, as later Rance games have gone on, that I should have good gameplay, like, it's nice that they have it because it makes it more fun to go through, but like, for what these are, I'm not gonna judge. It'll be just kind of like mean joke entries a little bit, but honestly, I liked it. <laughs> I think these are the two games that have, they focus more on Athena and Rance's interactions, and those interactions are extremely good. I already talked about it a bit in my Rance 4 video, but they're really fucking funny. <laughs> and, well, obviously, her interactions with Rance aren't, like, maybe on the same tier as, like, how funny Syl and Rance are, just their overall dynamic due to just kind of having more games in general, and just, like, a different kind of dynamic. It's still really funny and, like, really enjoyable, honestly. I really liked it. I just seen them banter and, like, they're both stupid, like, if Rance is stupid, then Athena is, like, stupider times, like, 14. <laughs> like, it's just fun. It's just a whole lot of fun. So, honestly, it's kind of me to put them in C, but, like... Like, the gameplay is super bare bones, super whatever, but, like, honestly, like, the humor in it, it appealed to me. So it was maybe a little weird, but, like, I don't know, I like the... Uh, sure. I'll put it, I'll put it... Uh, for now. Maybe we'll move it. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> but see, 4.2 just takes off the right after where 4.1 ends. It's like, you can't play one without the other, basically. You can't play like 4.1. Or shit. You have to play. It just takes off directly after the ending. There we go. I don't know why I could think about that wording. That was too hard for me, I guess. But it's just basically the same thing about Rans 4.1, except it introduces some other characters, and those new characters are kind of cool. Kind of cool. 
but it still has the same kind of humor. It's still like the same shit from 4.1. It has an ending. Some stuff is kind of weird there, you know, I won't lie. <laughs> it's a little weird, but 4.1 and 4.2 are just really fucking funny to me personally, and yeah, <laughs> I like it. I like them probably more than I should, maybe. Because they got like a fucking like 2.1 average on backlog, which should be feel dumb, but you know, also I'm smart, so it's okay. <laughs> But her point is, they're goofy, funny games. Don't think too much about them. Like, they could always just be like, here. Oops. Like, whatever. I like them. For sure, for sure. Still the same gameplay in 4.2 as 4.1. Nothing really new there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's all I have to say, really. Next we have Muv Love, and I kind of... When I noted them as being them, I did kind of count Muv Love, uh, like, extra and then unlimited as, like, two separate entries. But if you just buy the first Muv Love game, it like it comes they're in the same game essentially they're not like separate titles so i'll just be kind of combining my vote or like my placing for both of them mobile of extra the first i guess part of the trilogy i went to expecting i would dislike it or hate it because everyone was like this is the worst thing i've ever fucking read and when honestly i read it i had a good time with it like <laughs> i'm never not gonna say it's like the best rom-com comedy thing you'll ever read in your whole life like I, it's really not that good right but like it's funny it's cute it has like nice art and like nice like aesthetic stuff and um it gets like pretty animated and like, it's just it's just fun like, <laughs> i liked it honestly um that's all you can really say about extra itself i guess and um and then for unlimited unlimited takes kind of it's i think personally i like it a good amount more it with the whole like ship and atmosphere and like is that the word? I don't think I should use atmosphere for that. Like just different new kind of world stuff it introduces and all the new different like entities and like just all the dark shit that happens. I don't wanna go into it here because like you probably already know, but like if you don't, I'd rather keep it you don't know. <laughs> but um uh, I really I don't say I liked it like a bit. I would put it like here for like both games. I definitely like unlimited more than extra, but like it's cool. I like what it. It's just fun to read. That's I think the main gist of it for me. It it's fun. It's not something super deep, super complicated, but it's fun, and I like fun. So <laughs> there you go. The next we have Mud Love Alternative, and oh wait, <laughs> it was it was definitely something that I really very much fully enjoyed. Um, it just takes all the different like, characters, like I've seen different Mud Love characters, and like. Everything it does for every single character is just so good. They, their development throughout the whole game is it's fucking great. By the end of the game, I love everybody. They're all my kids. <laughs> They're all fucking great. Um, I cried a ton throughout the whole thing. And sometimes, sometimes I'd be because I read the game on uh, PS Vita, so I'd be like reading it sometimes in like public or like just like at whatever restaurant, and like I'd have to like hold back crying, and it felt fucking painful. And same with kind of Subahibi. The uh, Mubla Alternative gave me a ton of dread at certain points because I knew some fucked up shit was just gonna happen and it was gonna be horrible to like experience. And it was, but it was really good. I really liked that feeling too. Um, all the different characters are great. Not only are the Mubla of Extras, like the, or shit, the Mubla of Extra characters from like Unlimited and stuff, not only are they good in the in Alternative, and they'll develop and they're all fucking great. <clears throat> but, um, let me take some water. Topsy, they're all great. I love them all. But especially um, the new characters that they introduced in um, in Alternative. And like, oh, they probably show up maybe at some point in Unlimited. I don't really remember. But like, just mainly the kind of new cast is also really fucking good. And it's just, it's just such a really good experience. I understand why it's like, I don't know if it's still the top one on like BNDB. And obviously, don't take those things as like gospel. Like, oh, that shit's stupid. But. I can definitely understand why it's so popular. I definitely really loved it too. And it has it also has a girl who has bunny ears, and she's like the my favorite character in the whole thing. She's awesome. But you know, what I actually didn't cover an alternative is also that the main character, Takudu. Takudu? I'm gonna sound stupid so I'm pronouncing his fucking name. But he's also just a really like enjoyable protagonist to read. Like, you basically just see him go through so much shit throughout these games and like to see the end result of a broken man is really fucking great. <laughs> um, 
I just like seeing how the, I guess, the main, like, conflicts of the game and all the shit that happens, it pushes every character to their worst and, like, it fucks everyone up. And I think that process of seeing each character, I guess, kind of deteriorate, like, their mentality kind of get fucked up from all the shit. I think it's really interesting. I really enjoyed reading it and just seeing, just seeing it all. Like, it's, all of it is really good. I love the whole thing. It's so, it's so good. Um... I'm not sure if I'll put it at like the bottom of S plus or like here. I'm not too sure. You could convince me either way. I'll think about it a little for now, I'll leave it here, but like it can definitely just be up here as well. Like, I absolutely love it. Now, <laughs> on the topic of things that I absolutely love, we have Kichiko Rans and <clears throat> I knew everyone loved Kichiko Rans. I knew it had like everyone would tell me it's the goat and I was gonna see for myself, is it really the goat? The answer is yes. <laughs> it's the GOAT. Um, I have so much I want to say about this game. I really, 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 really love this game. I love everything about it. I love all the different like aspects of the world it expands on from the first four, I guess six technically, if you count the 4.1 and 4.2 entries. Um, what it expands on for those games. It's so good seeing all the different characters and how they like respond to all the shit that's going on now. It's so great. All the different, like, there's so many good individual character moments um, for every character. But especially Rance himself, seeing how he can respond to all the different kind of character situations. Because um, one aspect of the game that I absolutely love is that not everyone can have a happy ending in the game. And obviously, not just random. <laughs> That's not insulting if I say it like in a like insulting way, but like. Not just like a random like NPC character that maybe you can't like do anything with, but just like even main characters that you've grown to love from the first four, five, six games. You, you get the point. I'm not gonna reiterate that part again, but not everyone gets a happy ending, and oftentimes you have to choose like a happy ending for one character instead of like a maybe like, not inherently bad, but just not like the best quote unquote ending for the another character and. Seeing how he responds to like different characters if they die and like pass away due to not doing X Y Z, it's really fucking good. And <laughs> I'm obviously not gonna go into any particular spoilers for the game because it's I'm not gonna do that. I'm not. I'm not me. And but just like maybe like see a certain not certain, like a character from like that I had grown to like from the first few games. They passed away from an illness because I didn't build the hospital in time. And seeing Rance react to that, that made me feel like shit. And then that character is like someone who was close to that character. Also, would, like if you talk to them with Rance, they would talk about how like, oh, I'm gonna bring flowers to their grave. And that, like that whole scene, that made me feel like shit. Like I felt so fucking horrible. And obviously by that point, I was a little too late to have the hospital built in time for like that. For like the kind of I guess deadline, quote unquote, for the illness to like kill him off, and I just felt fucking horrible, and <laughs> it was so it made me feel so bad. And not just that, but there's other characters who they can just fucking die, and then I feel like ass, and then every other character reacts to that. It's just it fucking broke me, and <laughs> I let a I let multiple really important important people like die because. I played for the game. I looked for I looked up some stuff because I, I wanted to like make sure I beat the game at least like for my first time. But um, so obviously quite a few like, important characters got bad endings, and it made me feel so fucking bad. Like <laughs> it felt horrible just seeing that these characters I grew to love from all these games just pass away and like get fucking owned. <laughs> so obviously there's an aspect of just so many bad endings for not- no one is safe, literally no one is safe, and I think that's really fucking cool. Um, cause I mean, it's war, and that's fucking cool. Um, there's that, and seeing just how Rance responds to all of it all, like, Rance was already one of my favorite characters ever, <laughs> like, I really love the guy, he's fucking incredible, but that game, like, solidified him as, like, probably, like, my, like, fourth or fifth favorite character of all time, and then, like, my second favorite protagonist. And honestly, he might even become my favorite. Like, I love that guy. He's the best. <laughs> and, um, yeah, like, just all the different, like, endings and, like, different scenes that a character can experience, like, it's super fucking good. And it, like, it just feels so bad to see some characters, like, 
just die and like it's your fault that they die like <laughs> and just there's just so much shit i love about that like i love i obviously like it when games can bring emotional like feelings out of me this one's kind of weird but you get the idea right in that game it brought it just brings so much to like just for me to think about and <clears throat> What else is there? Just like the whole different conflicts between the different nations and how they interact with each other and like the fucked up shit that you don't obviously see maybe as much detail in each individual like nation or like, country or whatever. I don't know if you say country for that, but you know, you wouldn't see as much as maybe as like I'm sure later rant schemes will kind of well, I already know, like mainly from rant six, something of like what's that, but like you don't see as much maybe inner conflict as like other games might elaborate on, but like what is there is still really good. And then like with the whole like war with the monster nation and how they exist and what they do, like it's all really good. There's just so much I love about this game. If any of you guys have ever played Fire Emblem 4, I I don't want to say it's like it's just like that game. I think like Malcolm well, might come first. I don't actually remember. Maybe maybe not. I don't remember. Point is, it. It has a little bit of the same feel that I get from FE4, but honestly just way more in-depth for like all the individual characters because obviously the whole bad ending, good ending system, as well as just like everything in that game as a whole. Like it just has the same sort of feel to me, I guess. It's it's just such a good game. I absolutely adore this game. <laughs> Different all of my social media is just slowly becoming variations of the word Kichiko for like my username and stuff. I absolutely, I just really adore this game. As you tell, it's definitely my favorite thing here. Like, easy as plus, plus, plus. <laughs> I'm just not gonna make a single tier for like one game, but if there was something I had to do, it would definitely be this game. I just, I absolutely fucking adore it and everything about it. And if, if anyone, like, if anyone ever plays it and gets through it all, like, I could literally just talk for hours and hours and hours again on that. Hours and hours and hours on about this game. If, if I talk about spoilers and like all that shit, so it's just such a it's 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 the perfect video game, the peak of fiction. It's the go. I love it. <laughs> I I I definitely am looking forward to when I get around to making a video on it because it's probably like like two hours long. <laughs> like, there's just so much I want to talk about and so much I want to go into about this game. It's it's a very special game to me. I absolutely love it. It's honestly like. I'd honestly put it, it's getting very close to just my favorite game of all time. Also, you know, I've talked about the story, but even the gameplay itself, the whole kind of like managing your army and like choosing which cities and stuff to attack and like the different managing stuff that you have to manage because obviously Rance is the king, he's the brutal king of Rance. It's name, I think that's the English name. Like all that type of stuff. Just all that, it's super cool, it's super fun, like <laughs> it's surprisingly like really enjoyable. Like obviously it's still... It's a little old, so it's not like as maybe something modern as like I think Sengoku Rance has a similar system to Kichigo Rance, so I'm sure it's like not as like it's obviously not like, gonna I mean, be the same like modern kind of like UI feeling it has, but like for what it is, it's really fucking enjoyable. I love it. <laughs> um yeah, there we go. I love Kichigo Rance, that's the end of the story. Um I feel like if there's anything else I want to talk about. I obviously don't want to go into too many more character specific details and stuff because that'll eventually be for my video anyway. But, um, yeah, it's it's just a really, I absolutely adore it. I could go on out for everybody. Also, the OST is amazing. It fits everything super well. Force is the greatest song ever made. <laughs> and, um, just all the different songs are fucking great. And, um, I really enjoy the art. I think someone in the comments of my Ranch 4 video had talked about, like, art style getting even better for Kichigo Ranch. And I agree. The art is really fucking good. It just... It's just specific like charm to it and like this is so much polish. Like it's just so good. It's the perfect game. <laughs> uh so yeah. So, you know, Kichigo Rance, you know the goat, the goat, simply the goat. Uh, next we have Rance 5D. You know, I just I can talk about Kichigo Rance forever. Rance 5D is a game that I played in this universe. Um it's <laughs> it's RNG the game. Everything is everything in the game, literally fucking everything is just turned by RNG. And, uh, it's kind of weird. It's super short. I think, it, I think it's like, well, I don't remember, like maybe five, six, seven hours long, maybe. But that length can have just depend on RNG, which is kind of fucking weird. Like, you know, if you know the game 100% Orange Juice on Steam, it's like that, but worse in that aspect. It's kind of fucking weird, honestly. <laughs> but 
I do gotta admit that the comedy and like instant dialogue is still great. All the Rance games have good dialogue and good like content, and uh, this game is no exception. But the gameplay is just so fucking weird. I don't know how to feel about it really. I'm still gonna put like here, I guess, because like. I mean, I definitely wouldn't consider it bad, just because the content, like, the story stuff is funny. Also, Rizna is very cute, and she's just a little girl. Not really little. <laughs> she, she, but she's good. I like her a lot, and, um, yeah. It, it, it's something got funny characters, funny moments, funny stuff that I enjoy. And seeing how it, like, continues to show off returning characters is still pretty damn cool. Definitely like that aspect, too. And, uh... It has Athena. She's raw. I like her. <laughs> and it's a funny game for sure. But the, the gameplay still holds it back from in like probably in B tier maybe. But on top of a B tier. Just kidding. That sounds weird. You have milk inside a bag of milk inside a bag of milk. I think that's the name. I could only be messing it up. <laughs> but um. It's a. It's really a 15 minute game. Like really 15 minutes. If you get like the like. Two or three different endings. <laughs> like it's super short. Um, it was like a dollar on Steam. But, so it's like, it's a little hard to rate because like, it's so short, like it's like, it's like a YouTube video if I'm thinking about it, right? But um, I, I do definitely like it. It has like a very distinct like, dark tone and like, FC Cop focuses on kind of like, the like, mental illness kind of thing that the main character has and just like, how she views everything and like, how she feels. It's, it's all really great, honestly. like. It's it's a it's a dark game I guess like it has a super dark tone to it. The art style is very like distinctive and like it stands out in my head a lot honestly. And um, it's just it's it's got like for a 15 minute game it's pretty good. I probably put it like here I guess. Probably like here, maybe sure somewhere somewhere like that. Cause like it's not longer so it's a little harder to rate but like. I really enjoyed it for like what it is. And I definitely want to play the sequel, which you can see is right here. So um, next on the list is White Album Two. Now I guess I could technically count like White Album Introductory Chapter and then like Closing Chapter separate games, but for all intents and purposes, like I didn't. I saved my opinion on it till like I finished the whole game. So yeah, and man, this <laughs> White Album Two brain rot is real, and it will infect you in your own home. Um, uh, what's it called? So the whole, I guess, kind of shtick with it is the kind of introductory chapter. It's like maybe 10, 15 hours long, and it focuses on this main trio and like kind of a love triangle in high school. And then in the closing chapter, which is way longer, I think probably like 30, 40, 50 hours is a good estimate. Maybe it depends a little fast on how, like, how you read and all that kind of shit. Like, but you know, point is pretty long. Um, you do see the characters in college, and then also in a later arc, there is <clears throat> you get to see the characters as they grow up into being, like, I guess, working adults. And that aspect is really cool because it's not often in media that I feel. I mean, okay, there's definitely examples. I don't want to like act like I've seen everything, read everything, watched everything, but like for mission novels, at least specifically, it isn't feel like often that you get to like see these characters in like one entry you know they start like high school typical not typical but like just love stuff you know whatever and then you can see them going to college and see how their mindsets and like thoughts and actions like how all of them change from like college and then you can see them into working adults and just living through life and like managing things i think that aspect is really great and just like it's a little hard to like go into why i like it so much because like, it's a long game and there's just so much to kind of think about with it. But some main aspects is that the three main characters... Uh, fuck, I think the main character's name was Haruki? Yeah, I think so. If I'm wrong, I'm gonna look dumb, but whatever. Kazusa and Setsuna, those are... At least Pidget, I, I, I like Haruki. I like the main character, he's cool. He's definitely like a good character, I like him. But for me personally, the most standard characters were those two main girls and also the main character's best friend, kind of? Well, not kind of. He is his best friend. Um, those three are particular are standouts for me. Um, but I honestly really love the whole kind of main cast and like the different heroines and everything. But Kazusa and Setsuna in particular are just two of the some of the most like fleshed out, most like 
human, real, etc. characters that I've ever gotten to experience and like thinking of- there's just so much to think about regarding those two. They're just- they're just so, so, so good and there's so much like pain throughout the whole game and oftentimes the, like, maybe a certain character will be on the receiving end of it like a lot and like that seeing them change and just deal with it all it's just it feels like shit <laughs> but um yeah they're just super fleshed out every obviously every character considering how long the whole game is gets to get their own time in the like time to shine i guess and like they all grow like not just one character or two characters like they all do and it's really it's just really good and like really emotional and I, I absolutely love the whole VN. It's definitely just one of my favorite things ever. Um, it It's such a... It's just... I, it's hard for me to like properly describe it. It's just... Each character feels so human and like feels so real. And one of the, I guess, the kind of main, I guess, themes about the whole VN is that it tackles a lot... Like, being in love can make you stupid. <laughs> like... You may not want to hear it, but it's true. I'm sorry. I'm guilty. I'm dumb too. <laughs> but, um... Like, it's just... <laughs> I think seeing that and seeing how they handle it is honestly really good. And just how each character acts. Like, sometimes they might be doing something kind of stupid. It's like, can you blame them? Or like, I don't know. It's just, it's really great. And it's so good. Also, like, the OST and, like, different songs and stuff. I love the, like, I guess, opening song. A fuck ton. It's it's so good. <laughs> um, the aesthetic of the game is great. Obviously, since as they get older, they all get like different portraits and stuff too, and just like it gets emotional for me personally, just seeing them all grow throughout the whole thing. I really love it. If you can't already tell, <laughs> I'd probably put it like here. I think I think I still like like these two more, but like honestly, like the gap isn't that big for sure. <clears throat> all right, so next we have Atri. And I think the full name is like actually something my dear memories. I actually don't remember. I'm kind of a fake fan. Um it's a pretty short sure VN, probably like 10 15 hours or so. Um It's it's definitely not bad or anything. It's very pretty. I think it came out in like 2020, I think. Maybe I think so, I think so. Or like around that time frame. So obviously it's got really nice modern art and it's very pretty. Um but I, it kind of see. I think things can be short but still be very good. I mean, like um, NSO is like 10, 15 hours to get all the endings, which granted that game's a little different. Obviously, like formatted than Archery, but like things can be short and still be very impactful. I mean, like look at Ran Street, right? I really like that game, and it's only like 10, 15 hours long at most. So, um, but look at when you look at Archery, like. It kind of feels like a game that suffers from being so short, rather than it, like, being short is just like, eh, you know, it doesn't matter. Because I feel like if it had any more time to, like, develop each character and develop the world itself, I think it would be a bit more impactful and just, like, more interesting. But it's not bad or anything. I still like it, for sure. Like, the whole, I like the main character dynamic um, between Atri the Orobato and um, the main character. Pretty great. They're cute. The romance, egg scenes in it are, are adorable. I definitely was like, ooh, so cute. Cause I'm a sucker for cute shit. But uh, I'm taking a sip of water. <sighs> but uh, <clears throat> I don't know. It's also kind of just like, eh, it, it's not. It's, not, it's gonna leave like a big impact on me, like a big lasting impression, but. Atri is still extremely cute. She's a very good girl. I like her a lot. <laughs> um, I mean, I could, I would recommend it. I, I guess because it's short, and sometimes you want something short, and it's not, it's not bad or anything. It's just not as like impactful or like, I don't know, meaningful to me personally. Because some stuff was kind of cringe too, but <laughs> you know, as a whole, I definitely, I would say I like it. Probably maybe like, like maybe here. Really like cute, like I don't know, like mm. okay. If I okay, I like Rants 5D more than it beyond the gameplay. So, okay. <laughs> dude, maybe I just put fucking Rants 5D up here, dude, man. Like, fuck it, like I don't know. <laughs> you know, fuck it. If I, I'll look past its gameplay and I'm putting it up here, 
And I'll put actually like here, I guess. I think that looks right. <laughs> that really looks weirder than I was expecting it to be, but... Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I think this is how I feel. Um, yeah. Next we have Gore Screaming Show, which is actually a VN I didn't know existed until uh, when it was- It was like, during the time frame when it was about to release in English, I believe. It came out, I think, in like 2005 or 2006, and it was only localized like a month-ish ago. <clears throat> which is also really cool that like, something so old can still get a translation. It's obviously not like, kind of the first time ever, but like, it's still pretty cool. And if you can't tell by the name, it's obviously got a lot of- it's got a good amount of gore. <laughs> It's like a kind of horror-esque game with a pretty like random Dempa elements on. Well, not random, but like certain rounds kind of have some Dempa elements as well, which are pretty, pretty in like pretty I, I, fun. Probably isn't the word I should use, but it's the word I can only think of. But it's just good, enjoyable to read. That's I guess, <laughs> I guess I could say. Um, in particular, how I feel about the game as a whole, kind of stuff is like. Whatever, it's a little, it, it can be a little goofy at times, but it's also not too long, so it's not like it's not that bad. Um, the character routes, the I did a Kane's route first, the orange hair girl here, and it was all right. I uh, like it, it kind of led to what to expect for us to be in, which is you know kind of cool. And it, honestly, I did like reading it. It's kind of maybe like, some routes like they might be a little too short as a whole. I think the Biggest complaint I have with the game is that it's not—it's like too short. <laughs> I think, like the kid, particularly these three girls here, like on the cover, I think they would have benefited from having longer character routes and, um, I guess just like, like a longer game in general to so kind of like focus on more like. It, I guess it doesn't have to be slice of life moments. Like it's not a slice of life isn't the only way you can give kind of like attachment to a character, but just like I don't know other content for them to like, I guess, like them a bit more, but <clears throat> in particular, the other two heroine rats are like, I don't, <laughs> I didn't like them, to be honest, um, the, the blonde hair girl right here, in particular, I, just, I did not like it at all, it was, it was appalling, <laughs> it was, uh, okay, okay, it, it wasn't bad, it definitely wasn't bad, I definitely wouldn't like, consider like how I said one, some of one rats were like fucking horrible, like I, they were pissing me off, it definitely not on the tier of that. But they're definitely like, oh, it's a little weird. Like, I don't know. I can't get into them. The bad endings, they're horrifying. They're very, <laughs> they're very fucked up. Honestly, the main story itself doesn't have, like, there's, there's mostly violence and gore, but it's not as much as if you go for all the bad endings, because the bad endings are very, very fucked up. <laughs> um, but they also, <sighs> this is looking horrible. Like, I do, a lot of the bad endings do kind of just, involve non-consensual actions, which it obviously not good, very like not good, and then there's usually gore thrown into those actions, which <laughs> you can, I'm sure you can imagine uh, that it's not, it's not a good experience, but um, I wish some of the bad things went into a little bit, uh, like things other than that, but honestly like for what they are, they were, it's honestly not bad to experience them, because they still have like new perspectives on like stuff and like you get to see all the characters be like man I fucked up this is pretty bad and like I regret everything like I think that kind of like mindset that you can see the characters have is pretty interesting and they're also I mean they be longer obviously because it's so they, they get fucked up in it but I think it's and they're also not that bad like I would, <laughs> I would probably recommend going for all the endings or at least trying to um it is of a gore filter so it can at least cover up like the um the uh <laughs> The CGs, though sometimes it's still pretty messed up, but uh, you know, all good, all good. <laughs> um, right, but on to the actual, the true routes, which you unlock after finishing the three heroine routes here, they're really, really good. Like, they're really enjoyable. I think they could still benefit from being a little longer, but as a whole, I really like them, honestly. Like, they definitely were the highlight of the VN for me. Yuka, Girl Screaming Show, she's my daughter. I love her. She's the best, <laughs> and uh, just also some of the, like the other um, two like adult kind of main characters in the story are also really great. It's just really those two rats are just really really good, and this is my favorite part of the whole thing. Um, uh, as a whole, as like a whole game, not really a little weird to write it. Like maybe like here or like 
here. Like, I don't know, I could still, I could still, if I do like, like this, but like, I don't know. It's, it's a little weird for me to decide, honestly. I'm not entirely sure how I, like, want to order things, because honestly, like, this, like, my order could be like this. Oops. Oops, not there. Like, this, and I'd be like, yeah, that's probably right, or it could also be like this, like, it'll be like all down here, and I'm like, yeah, that's probably right. Uh, so, I don't know. It's a little weird for me to, like, properly order these two. If I had, like, a, I'm not gonna bother, because it's gonna mess up my layout. My layout. What the fuck? Wor words? Sorry. <laughs> It messes up how my screen looks here, but like if I like it like a B plus tier, like it'd probably be in these. So I guess just to be nice, like I'll I'll leave them. I guess like kind of up here, maybe. Like sure, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not gonna think too much about it because as I just said, my opinions change a lot, and I'm kind of like a goober. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're not gonna think too much about it. Just know that these like the slots of these are pretty flexible. That's the order is like pretty flexible too. They we put our order and like I would be like yeah probably probably like this this is probably the order be like this here because I really liked Yuka's route but yeah we'll just leave it up there for now I guess um yeah <laughs> actually okay we'll we'll settle it with this so like that sure sure <laughs> I won't change it by the end of the video it's okay guys sorry I'm not very professional with this one <laughs> uh all right. Lastly, actually not lastly, excuse me. Second to last VN that I finished this year is Utuwaru Mono. I think I'm not saying that correctly, but you get the idea. Put to the Fallen, which is a remake of the first Utuwaru Mono game. <laughs> I could type it fine, but I can't say it. I'm sorry. Um, It's a pretty chill game, a pretty comfy game. Um, It's got... The main problems I have with it is that the villains all suck. And that's kind of a little unfortunate, because like... They're all just super omega one note and like cringy and like <clears throat> I don't know. There's just nothing to them really. And they're all just like painful to read. <laughs> but what the game does have is the gameplay is like it's pretty like it's pretty. I don't say it's bad. It's tactical RPG stuff, which is like fine, like fun enough. It's a nice break from like the gameplay or from reading stuff and. It's like fun since like how the characters grow and stuff, and like some neat mechanics with that, but like for the most part it's pretty like bare bones, like you're not gonna be like busting your brain thinking about how to beat the game. Like it's just it's just a nice little bonus. Especially also because this unless the main character is defeated, like everyone else just comes back, like every chapter, so if someone dies, like it doesn't actually matter. They just retreat. Kinda like casual mode in FE if you want like an example to think about. But um like it's fun enough. It's like it's it's fine, it's not bad or anything. Um uh, what's it called? But Slice of Life is pretty comfy and like pretty chill. And I, it's definitely like the highlight, I guess, of the game. Um, it's just fun. And like seeing all the different characters like bond over stuff. There's like a few cringy tropes in it that were like <laughs> a little weird. But for the most part, it's definitely just a really like fun, like it's just a fun game to go through and like experience. Because the art is pretty, the music is nice. Um, the slice of life, as you know, I like slice of life stuff. It's comfy, it's chill, and uh, excuse me. Um, yeah, like it, it's just a comfy game, and I enjoyed it. Uh, whereas I'd put it probably, hmm, I think it's kind of awkward to place. I think like maybe like. I'm not sure. Okay, you know what? After I rank, after I pick everything up, I'll probably make like a A minus tier or something and just put these in it. Cause like I can't. I'm. I don't know. I think it's like a tier above these games, but still like, not. I don't like them as much as these. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So the last game I beat this year, and will probably be the last one I beat this year. There's a chance that like I might finish some of these. Like, one of these before the year ends, but I want to have this video done, just kind of like work on it and have it up like before the year's over. And I doubt, because most of these are kind of long, but so it's one-ish. Um, I doubt, it'll probably be the last one. So I figured I might as well just wait until, to make this video until I finish it. And that is Alcana Extra 2, which is, um, in, I guess, kind of after story, 
um, like continuation of Misaki's rap from Aikana. And obviously, her character rap, 10 out of 10, amazing peak fiction. And <laughs> this game is obviously also peak fiction, baby. Um, I absolutely adore Misaki. I, I really love like everything in this game. I love how um, one particular I guess, thing to note in this game is that obviously at the end of Misaki route, like her mindset has changed from the beginning of it. And she becomes a just stronger overall person. And then obviously people, I guess, kind of want to... Like, it basically deals with, I guess, the... Well, I guess it's kind of spoilers for a rap, but, like... Um, like, it, it deals with, like, kind of... Consequences? Well, that's the right word. Just, like, what she struggles with after accomplishing her goals. And the kind of empty feeling that you might have after, like, Well, I finished what I wanted to do, but then, like, where do I go from here? Like, what do I do with my future? What do I do with my life? Like, that kind of thing. It tackles that and just, like, her different... It deals with her different emotions and everything. And I really... I really, really, really love this. It, it's not too long. It's like I think, within like five to ten hours, you can probably finish it. So obviously, you shouldn't finish it until after Misaki route in Okana, the base video game. But it's so, it's just so good to me. It, what it does for a character, and honestly, even the main character, who he's fine. Like he's not like a bad character or anything. But like sometimes he might be like a little like, eh, like I don't know if I feel much. But like in this round in particular, like in this, I guess chapter, whatever. Like, I, it was just really enjoyable for, like, how he feels, too, and, like, seeing more stuff from, like, her perspective and her own thoughts. Like, it's just, it's really fucking great. I absolutely love it. It's, <laughs> it means a lot to me. Because, and after I finished Base of Alcana, I was like, yeah, I mean, it's like a character I can really relate to and, like, understand, like, pretty well, and this game just kind of furthers that, and just seeing how she grows. It's, it's so good. Where I'd put it, it's a little hard for me to decide because I didn't only finish this like two, three, four days ago, depending on when this video goes up. Um, but it's. I'm thinking maybe like here ish. Probably still under these two, but probably. Like, I don't know. Because I, I just really, really love her character. Also, this art is really cute. <laughs> but I also really love White Album too, like everything in it. Like, honestly, like. I kind of already said earlier, but like this whole order of stuff is like completely up to, up to like how I feel, like how I wake up that day, like, hmm, I wonder how I feel today, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I'm not going to think too much about it, <laughs> I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, so yeah, that's all the VNs I beat this year, which is pretty exciting. However, that's not all I've played this year, technically. <laughs> um, for stuff I'm currently in the middle of, we have Sakura no Uda. Um, Itiwaru Ruru Romano Mask of Deception and Rant 6. So let's just go into this a little bit real quick. Sakura no Uda is by the same author as um, Subahidi. I forget which came first. But uh... And like I think they share like the same artist or like some artist. Like, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not gonna act like I know because I don't wanna look too dumb. But point is... Um... Hmm. Apologies, apologies. <laughs> um, it's just, it's mostly a work that I've been reading. I probably have maybe like 10, 15-ish hours in it, and I really enjoyed what I've read so far. Um, it's still something I want to continue, and I definitely want to finish it by next year. Um, it's one of the, probably the first, like, VN I've gotten to read that actually has, like, an emphasis on, like, kind of, like, art and, like, drawing and painting and stuff, and it's really cool because... I, I haven't drawn in a while just because I've been distracted, like unmotivated with art in particular. But like, I really like to draw, honestly. Like, it's one of my favorite things to do, and I love it. So seeing a VN kind of focus on that and like have like an emphasis on it like that and like talk about it and all that kind of stuff. Like, I think that's really fucking great. It's really cool. It's super fun. Um, I really love the art in it. It's absolutely fucking gorgeous, and I'm really excited to just keep going through it. I definitely want to finish it by next year. And also, I guess, I guess, eventually they'll also will include the kind of sequel it has. I believe it's not like, yeah, it's a sequel. So, definitely looking forward to that too. Um, next you have Mask of Deception, which I'm playing on the PS Beta. And it's, um, for, I've only put in probably five, six, maybe seven? Just five, six hours, so wow, I read most. Um, because I haven't played it in the past few days, but, um, it's something I'm still in the middle of. And 
it's been, I've honestly really enjoyed my time with it more than Uswara Mono 1 already. Part of this comes from me actually enjoying the main character like a lot more. Like he still has his moments in, uh, in, like the main character in 1 has his moments for sure. I'm not going to say he's like a bad character or anything, definitely not. But I definitely just have enjoyed the kind of dynamic and like interactions of the main character here more. And like, he's just funny, <laughs> like he's a goober, I love him. And just the they're like the art, I think I'd say it's improved. The yeah, end, I would say it is. It's just it's super pretty, it's super nice looking. The gameplay seems to like the actual like maps and battles and stuff seem to have a bit more depth into it because now the timed hits actually matter a lot. Well, not a lot more. Like it's not you're gonna like lose if you don't, but like they actually have more of an impact than just what they were in this game. It seems like there's more different like skills and everything. And just characters are more unique, which is definitely a big plus because. Everything in this game felt super bare bones, super kind of like whatever, but in this game it seems like there's a little bit more depth to it. I doubt it's still going to be like the hardest game ever or something, or something that requires you to bust your brain, but like, it's more fun. And that's how I'm, it's important, like I want it to be more fun. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm definitely super excited to continue like going for this game as well. And now we have Rant 6, which uh, <laughs> I've also very much enjoyed. Is probably like if I had to order my priority on these, it'd probably be like this. Eh, actually, I don't know. With, with this being on PS Vita, it's like more comfy to read. So I guess like this is my priority. This be like a step above. But um, obviously I want to get through rants like the whole series and everything. Um, but what I've played in this game, I really <laughs> love. I can definitely see like if people don't like how repetitive like the dungeon crawling aspect can be, but. I still like, I, I kind of have a soft spot for it, like it's just been clicking for me. The comedy is great, the characters are great. What it's shown for particularly Zeph itself, like the land I kind of mentioned briefly when I talked about Kishiko Rants, it's pretty interesting and like just pretty fucking like cool to like look at and like see how they give more like spotlight and like talk about the different like pasts and stuff for the like just everything about the land of Zeph in this game. I hope I'm saying that right, if I'm not I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm super excited to just keep going through this game. I've been a bit, like, not busy. Actually, I guess, I guess I think I have. Just been doing other things, so I haven't had the time to play it like in the past two, like, one or two days, but it's only something I'm super excited to just keep going through. And I absolutely, I'm already, I'm already loving the game, so. <laughs> yeah, this is probably be the one out of these three I beat the first, but yeah. And lastly, we have my most interesting category, which I figured it'd be cool to put in just to kind of briefly go into stuff I'm most interested in trying. We have Mahoyo here, Sengoku. I have Sengoku Rants here just because I didn't want to put every single rant scheme <laughs> that I haven't played yet. So like O3, um, O3, Sengoku uh, Quest, and then like Rants 9 and then 10. Super excited for 10. I feel like 10 to an end fiction for me. Like I think that'd be like the best if it's not if it's better than Kichigo, etc. etc. But even if it's not better than Kichigo, if it's first gonna be like the second best thing of all time, so all good. <laughs> but excuse me, I just put it just like kind of like the placeholder for all Rance games. But um, yeah. Then we have Two Heart Two, H Two O. Who's the? It's Milk outside of bag of milk outside of bag of milk. I think it's the full name. I don't really remember. Uh, Summer Pockets, Reflection Blue, and Mask of Truth, or with the Water Um, what's it called? So, uh, I guess we'll just briefly talk about it. For Mahoyo, I would, I would have actually probably read it this year if I had, um, bought it on, like, Switch, like, digitally, or, like, PS4 or whatever, but I bought it, I bought the limited edition version on, um, Switch, and it doesn't come out until I believe, like, <clears throat> I think it's like January 27th or the 29th or something, and uh, so I haven't obviously don't have the game yet. Um, I could, I guess like I could maybe find a way to pirate it, but I also would kind of rather like have it. Ooh, I get to read it on my TV. That's pretty cool. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of wait, wait it out. So that's kind of why I'm just like tackling all this other stuff in the meantime. But I'm super duper excited to read this because I really like Typhoon stuff in general and. This is probably the work I've just anticipated the most, and uh, obviously it's something I'd want to be forever, but due to the not full translation in English, and I don't know French, <laughs> or I took French classes, but I don't remember anything of it. Um, I haven't really gotten to experience it yet, but with it being on English and also with voice acting and like on the pretty TV, like I'm just super fucking excited. It's definitely going to be, once I have my copy, 
which will be part by the end of January. I'm definitely gonna squinch the shit out of it, and I'm just, I'm super excited um, to have it or to be able to read it by then. Um, it, it sucks having to wait in the meantime. Don't get it twisted, but I'm super excited. This is something the work I'm probably looking forward to the most outside of like, I guess besides France. Like France, like I'm already, I'm already super into France already, but. For, I guess, another title, this is like what I'm most anticipated for. Obviously, I already went about Rans. I'm super excited to just experience everything else for Rans. <clears throat> In particular, like, <laughs> like, I'm already super liking Rans 6, and like, I'm sure I'm gonna really love the game by the end. And then I'm like super excited to send Goku Rans, because obviously that game is super popular. Like, it's probably. Okay, I guess I can't speak for like everybody and like every opinion, because I don't know everything, <laughs> but like, it's definitely probably the game I heard of. Like, that was Rants related, like in the Rants series, before like actually trying them out and everything, just from like people trying it and like it being their first game. So I'm definitely like looking forward to it, like from that aspect as well. Like, ooh, I wanna see like what this game is all about and like the gameplay and stuff. Cause like, it's funny seeing like, when I go for like some Rants music on like YouTube and stuff, I've seen like results of like, <clears throat> of like, <laughs> like people speed running the game and shit and talking about just like how fun it is. So. I'm really super excited for it for that aspect, but like every single other Rans game, especially O3, like okay, not just O3. Like, I'm like super excited for all of them. Like O3, I loved Rans 3. I'm sure I'm gonna fucking love Rans O3. It's gonna be even better, and like that's exciting. Well, not probably, definitely is, but shh, I don't know that. <laughs> um, Rans 8. I don't actually. I haven't heard a lot about it in particular, but like I'm sure it's great. It seems fucking great. And everyone says it's, yeah. I don't haven't heard it as much, but like. The people I have like, seen talk about it, I'm like, yeah, we really like this game, it's sick. And I'm like, okay, that's great. <laughs> um, and then Rants 9 and 10. Rants 9, I think, is translated yet. Yeah. I think it, I think they, actually, wait, no, that's a lie. I think I read that it's, like, fully translated, but they're probably, they're still in the process of, like, editing it all in the game. Or it's, like, in beta testing right now. So there's actually a chance it might come out somewhat soon. I'm not entirely sure. But, um, I'm super excited for that game. Uh, and then, like, I've seen Rants 10, like, I'm just... I feel like when I play that game, like, <laughs> it might become, like, my favorite game of all time or something. Like, it, I have high expectations for it, but I don't think they're gonna, like, fail me, be considering how much, like, I love Kichiku Rants and everything. Yeah. I'm sure it takes, like, some influence from that as well. So, like, I'm just super excited for, like, every Rants game a ton. Like, I'm fucking excited. Um, 2R2, maybe kind of random uh, compared to some of these, but... Honestly, I can't explain why I'm so interested in trying this game out, but like the art style seems super cute. I like slice of life stuff. And like reading some, I guess, leaf works like the one of the mono and like white album too. Obviously it's not the same author or anything, but like it's just made me interested in like trying out more stuff from them, I guess. Like I don't know, kind of like the novelty and also like the art style. It's just super cute. I like the twin tails girl here with the black hair. It's kind of obviously the picture tiny here, but yeah. <laughs> H2O is so not out in English yet. But there's a fan translation that was announced, I believe, um, was announced, I think like, a, probably like a month or two ago, and someone's been working on it, and it's the same author as Subahibi, I believe, don't quote me on that, but I think so, um, so I'm definitely super excited for that too, just also because I've heard a lot of great things about it, it has like, I think a, I forget if it's a blind protagonist, or like, a, someone like that, I think, or like, just someone who has... It's a disabled protagonist, I think. And, like, I think that's a pretty interesting concept to, like, kind of explore. Um, <clears throat> I forget if they're blind or, like, deaf or... I don't, I don't remember exactly, but I'm sorry. But, uh... Either way, I think that's gonna be really cool. The art style seems really cute. Like, I just really like the whole aesthetic, like... Tsubahibi, Saga Uda, and H2O have. Um... So, one that's translated, whenever that may be. Um, hopefully soon! <laughs> but, I'm definitely gonna read that. It's gonna be a priority. Um, this is obviously the milk outside a bag, outside a bag of milk, or outside a bag of milk, outside a bag of milk. You get the idea. Um, if there's anything I finished this year, anything else, it probably be this, because it's pretty short. Um, I have it on Steam already. I'm pretty excited to try it, just because obviously I like this game, and it seems to be a bit more fleshed out, and like, focus on the same like, mental illness aspect, and like, the struggles of it, and that you can have. So I'm definitely pretty excited to like, try it out, and uh, I'm... I don't have a lot to say, I'm just like, it looks cool. I like the aesthetic it has. I like, like, pixel art kind of stuff, like that kind of thing. Um, yeah. And Reflection Blue, I kind of already went on about when I talked about Base Summer Pockets. I liked Base Summer Pockets, you know, a fair amount, but I think if, if this game, like, kind of 
takes or addresses on my prompts I had with the summer pockets that like it'll probably be pretty high in my favorite things and like, something I really really enjoy like completely and uh, so that's something I super want to try out um I'm not sure when I'm gonna read it because like I I can't decide if I want to like skip past the character routes or like read them all again because I do think when I revisit like the four heroin routes I guess besides sure her route because I like, I already liked that bot by the end, but, like, the other character routes, like, I feel like if I reread them, maybe my thoughts will change a bit about them. So, like, I kind of want to give them all a chance again. And, like, it just might be fun like, to experience them again, for sure, right? So, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do about that. So, I'm kind of just delaying it so that they'll feel, like, fresh again, I guess. And then also, I can go through the new content and everything, so... The timing is going to be a little bit weird, but it's definitely something I'm going to do, like, with it next year. And obviously, I guess I figured since I have Mask of Deception, I'm here. I'm obviously looking forward to when I eventually get to Mask of Truth. Because, <laughs> there's people who like, the normal one is, you know, the first one's like, alright. The second one's pretty good, and the third one's like, peak big fiction. Or like, seems like the second and third game are peak fiction. Like, I'm just super hyped for, like, to experience this game. Obviously, I don't know, oops. I don't know shit about it. Because, like... I haven't, I'm keeping myself spoiler free on it all, but like I'm super excited to get this far and like just seeing how the plot turns out because I'm sure I'll like it a lot too. Um, so yeah, I, I guess that's it. We'll do I guess one quick brush up. Oops, shit. Uh, which I said I would make the new tier. <laughs> Alright, so so there we go. Let me make sure this makes this looks fine. Yeah, okay. So um yeah, there we go. That's my I guess whole tier list for everything I played this year. Um this is probably about what I'd order it as. As I said before, like these four games here, it can definitely be up in the air for how I'd order them. Um it, it's just up to God really. <laughs> um Yeah, but like the rest of the order is probably fair enough. Like this like this could also be here, but I think there's like a little gap between how I feel about like these games up here and these two to like stop it from going up there. But it's definitely close. It's definitely like it's not like some ginormous gap, just like a little bit of a gap. Um, these entries here, as I said, brands four, they're like interchangeable for me. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's I guess it. Um, I'd like to thank anyone who watched. It was a lot of fun just kind of going through it. This is like a long video, but. You know, it was fun. I like talking about stuff I like. Um, yeah, I guess that's gonna be it. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you around. <laughs>